Welcome back everybody to the channel and in today's video we're going to be photographing a galaxy from the city, well trying to at least. It's fall, it is the perfect time to photograph two major galaxies in the night sky. One of them I will be going after in this video called the Triangulum Galaxy or Messier 33. Galaxies are particularly hard to image in cities because of the light that they emit. And in today's video I'm going to see if I can grab one of the best images I can possibly get from the city, from Indianapolis, from Butler University. I've been so excited to image here because I'm a college student who goes here as a freshman and I have a big workload so coming out and doing astrophotography in this gorgeous place, the Holcomb Observatory, gets a little bit difficult. But needless to say, when we have a Friday night like tonight where we have nothing going on, we're able to sleep in tomorrow, so no 8 a.m.s, we have the perfect opportunity to go after these elusive galaxies in the night sky. Now obviously, for any astrophotography target, you wanna be shooting somewhere that's really dark. But in today's sense, when I'm in college towards a major city, sometimes that's just not possible. So we're gonna see if we can photograph a galaxy that's particularly hard to photograph in a city. So we're gonna see what we can do. I'm gonna be using my camera and telescope setup that I always use on this channel to photograph this and using specialized filters to pinpoint areas where I want to capture. For example, I'm looking for capturing star formation in this galaxy, something that gives birth to new stars just like our own, that we are the sole reason for living here for. So come along for the ride of photographing the Triangulum Galaxy from the largest observatory in Indiana, the Holcomb Observatory. Let's get into it. scene that I'm seeing here. It is absolutely gorgeous here in the fall. I mean, the leaves, the wind, and of course, Holcomb Observatory right there. It is one of the coolest places to be doing any sort of astrophotography. I don't know anywhere else where I have photographed something or been in the scene like this in my entire life. It's, it's crazy. And let me show you one more thing. I have a class right there. I have a class where I learn all about astronomy and this week we are learning about the sun so if you have any sun questions in the comments just let me know but back to the video all right so today we're going after the triangulum galaxy now what is this galaxy for starters it's located in the constellation of andromeda and it's also pretty easy to find it sits just below the massive andromeda galaxy which i'm sure many people on this channel have heard about it's a galaxy that i photographed many times it is 2.5 million light years away from earth and in a few billion years it's going to collide with us so yeah, that's, that's life. That's the universe, I guess. The Triangulum Galaxy, on the other hand, sits roughly 2.7 million light years away. So it's a little bit farther, but it's still pretty close to us. Now we live in the Milky Way, so these two galaxies are kind of considered our neighbor galaxies, other than our own satellite galaxies that you can actually photograph in the Southern Hemisphere, which are the large and small Magellanic Clouds. And the Triangulum Galaxy is a little fainter, a little bit smaller than the Andromeda Galaxy, which spans about six full moons in length if you're able to see the full thing in the night sky. But because we know that things in space are roughly invisible to our eyes unless you go to a dark sky site, you do need cameras to view the full detail of things. Otherwise, we'd be seeing things in just fuzzy patches all around. But that's not to say that photographing galaxies and space objects is impossible from home. For example, you can take your phone out to a dark sky site and photograph the Andromeda galaxy. You'll be able to see it. Um, it won't be completely what you've expected from a lot of the images that you see here, but you still will be able to get a great image of the Andromeda Galaxy that you can share with your friends. But there's one catch to the Triangulum Galaxy that I think is something that is a little bit of a deal breaker for some astrophotographers. As we know, galaxies host a ton of stars in their system. And I mean tons, from thousands to hundreds of thousands to millions and so on. It goes all over the place. These galaxies host numerous solar systems and other nebulae forming regions because how else would stars come to be? For example, the Orion Nebula, the Carina Nebula, 
the Eagle Nebula. These are all stellar nurseries that create new stars and allow more life to begin, hopefully, in some solar systems. But what I'm trying to get across is that the Triangulum Galaxy is a little bit special in the sense that we can see a ton of stellar nursery growth here. We can see a ton of hydrogen alpha emissions in this galaxy that are very far away from us, and they look really big in the night sky and in the galaxy itself. They almost look like fireworks, and that is the thing that I'm gonna be going after tonight. And I'm gonna be using a narrowband filter, the Optolong L Ultimate, to hopefully zoom in and peer on these objects where we can investigate where stars are being created and born. So I don't know about you guys, but I think that's pretty cool to be able to photograph stellar nurseries in a whole other galaxy that's completely unrelated to our own. So yeah, the universe is big. Okay, so we are almost done with the astrophotography planning process of photographing the Triangulum Galaxy. So what's next? Well, now we need to figure out how much exposure time we're going to pile on this object. Like I said, it's faint and it's going to require quite a bit of exposure so we can't just snap a picture of it and have it look pretty and post it to social media. That's just not how it works for this hobby, but that's part of the art of astrophotography. What we're going to have to do is get quite a few hours of exposure on this tonight. And typically, on a college night for me, I can only grab roughly around two hours. Since it's a Friday, so happy Friday, we're gonna be pushing five to six hours of exposure tonight since we just got uh, daylight savings time not too long ago. This means that me and Ryan are gonna be out here for quite a long time tonight, playing some music, having some snacks while our rigs are running and imaging our respective targets. I'm pretty sure he's shooting the Pac-Man Nebula, so when his video drops, make sure you check that out to view his awesome target that he's going to photograph. So to be able to investigate and look at the nurseries of star creation that are in the Triangulum Galaxy, we're gonna have to get roughly five hours of exposure time on it. And this is so we can acquire enough light to get a lot of detail on this object, so we can really zoom in and see just really what's going on in there, because that's what astrophotography is all about. It's about enhancing the detail of your images, looking in and seeing all the cool things that are going on because space it is a beautiful yet violent place because a lot of things happen in space so that's why we love to photograph it so five hours of exposure time should be sufficient enough here and we also do have a full moon that we're going to combat it's the harvest moon i think it was maybe full two days or so but it's still a giant gibbous phase so we're going to have to deal with that but no biggie as i dive more into my narrow band filter that's going to help this project out tremendously had a lot of technology problems but we are finally up and running we have phd2 going right now calibrating on a star close to the triangulum galaxy this basically means that we're going to get a lot of detail in our images and make sure that the reason we get the detail is because our stars are sharp so phd2 is making sure that my mount makes hopefully not a lot of mistakes and as you can see the mount is very close to Andromeda. So you can see Andromeda constellations right there. Triangulum is pointed just a little bit down. And up there you'll see Cassiopeia. And we are pointed just down there if it will stop focusing on my hand. So Ryan is going to be shooting the Pac-Man soon. The campus looks great, of course. And look at that. Just as I'm done talking, we have our first subs for our guide graph. So it's looking great. The observatory's hopping. I'm pretty sure the show that they're doing is looking at Saturn. So the observatory door is open. So really active night on the campus. And Saturn, boy, Saturn up there looks spectacular. And so the way that I've been photographing galaxies, nebulae and such really comes down to the setup itself. And for the Triangulum Galaxy, I have a wide enough telescope where I'm able to get most of it in frame, if not the full thing. And I actually, spoiler alert, do have tons of room for photographing this galaxy with my telescope setup. I have the Apertura 60 millimeter EDR. It's a doublet refractor telescope that is designed for taking pictures of astrophotography. So if you're interested in taking shots like I do on this channel, make sure you check out that. And I have all my affiliate links through High Point Scientific. So check that out if you're willing to make a purchase on there. It helps me out a lot to bring more videos out for you guys. If you're interested in any other products that I use on this channel, I also do have Amazon affiliate links. So check those out as well.
appreciate you guys. But anyway, I also have my Player One dedicated astronomy camera, which really helps me get the details that we really can't see with our eyes, and it really exaggerates everything. So we're able to pick up a lot of that faint light that our sensitive cameras need to pick up, so we're able to acquire a lot of data. We'll take a bunch of 180 second exposures here on the field, and then combine them later into a full stacked image, so we should be able to see a lot of star creation going on in this galaxy. But the main guy who pulls the whole thing together is the Skywatcher Star Venture GTI, which is the white tripod mount like thing that you're seeing. This helps me track the night sky because stars move ever so slightly throughout the entire night period. So it's really important that when we're zoomed in on those stars, they typically look like they're moving a lot faster. And when we're getting long exposures, we need to make sure that those stars are pinpoint sharp so we get the most detail possible. To ensure that I don't have any weird star trails that make my image blurry, I also have the guide scope there paired with my other Player One Mars C, which will hopefully be making an appearance photograph Jupiter and Saturn this winter. Well, I guess Jupiter since Saturn's on its way out, but we do need another telescope for that, so I will have to start working again soon on my college breaks. But as you saw, Jupiter is out and about now. Um, opposition should be approaching in the few months or so, maybe even a couple months, so I'm very excited to get out on the field and hopefully get an image of that because it's been a while since I've done planets. So, But let me show you more around of this place because it is late, there's no one out here, and it is just gorgeous in the night photography, astrophotographer perspective. I don't know if you guys are seeing this, but it is super freaky when it's dark out here. Now, um, a good thing about Butler is that they do have all their lights facing down, and that's largely because of the observatory. And as you can see, we have a full moon right there. Not sure what that constellation is, but if you can see through the trees there, there is the constellation of Orion. And this might honestly be a really good shooting location despite all the trees, but in the winter time, something that's super private and uh, really blocked by all the trees there. So it's, it's really cool. All right, quick little update with the Orion Astro. What time is it? It is 12.45 a.m. 12.45 a.m. Well, I've, no, we've we've both been out here since, what, 3, 3.30 we left at 3.30? Yeah, it has been almost 10 full hours of being out here. It is a gorgeous night, uh, as you have seen from the stuff that I have amazing. put in this video. It's amazing. No one out on campus, except for one of our friends that just left. And a um, little update on the exposures coming in. I don't know if my camera will focus. A little hard to see right now, but that is in fact a galaxy that we're trying to get from the city. So we'll see what we can do. Ryan was just pointed at the Pac-Man Nebula, and now we're getting a getting a little dose of what winter has in store for us in Orion, um, the Horsehead Nebula, yeah, right I've, there. I have not been able to image Horsehead from my backyard because of the trees, so I am getting excited about that. Yeah, so it's good. Night is looking good, had a little bit of a late start, but. So a summary of tonight has been absolutely phenomenal. And let me just show you guys the view that I'm looking at right now. So we have planets galore over here. Um, we have Saturn right there, followed by Jupiter right there, followed by the big star of Sirius there for the winter time, followed by the whole constellation of Orion, followed by a full moon. And just looking at the observatory here, all kinds of stars. You can see our setups over there, Ryan's doing his thing. It has been a gorgeous night here and a lot of air traffic too. So in short, it has been a great night of astrophotography and I am very confident that I'll be able to show you guys a lot of my findings in the Triangulum Galaxy that I've never actually looked at before. Seeing the creation of stars itself is something that is beyond my comprehension of understanding, even as a five-year astrophotographer who photographs a lot of stellar nurseries and star creation. I don't really see a lot of it in galaxies though, like really up close, like the one in Triangulum, which is only 2.7 million light years away. So it is just absolutely incredible that we can view this in really good detail and the fact that I'm able to do it from the city from Indianapolis which is only maybe five or ten miles away from Butler University and it does prove to show that yes you can take pictures of galaxies from the city just depends on how much effort you want to put in with filters and such anything is achievable from where you live you just need to make sure that you have the right gear to take the picture for the type of picture that you want like for example if you want galaxies make sure you go somewhere recommended 
recommendedly dark and if you're not somewhere that's recommendedly dark then maybe get a narrowband filter like the one that I explained in this video and you will achieve a lot of great things in your image. You will have a really good image to show all your family and friends which in this case I'm excited to share this image to all of you guys. I hope to bring more videos out for you guys in the winter time here because winter time astrophotography is one of my favorite parts of the season. So now I'm going to show you guys the image that I got of the Triangulum Galaxy zooming in on those stellar nursery areas of star creation. So I hope you guys enjoy that. Take care guys and clear skies.